When I'm camping or boondocking, I'm typically totally off the grid and I have to rely completely on whatever energy I can produce and store. And that typically comes from solar panels. I have solar panels, I have two batteries, and I have the sun. So that usually works pretty good. But I'm very limited in the amount of sun I have during the day, plus if it's cloudy, and plus if I'm using other things as well. In any case, I have to consider those factors when I'm trying to choose a cooler or a refrigerator for my purposes. So, the big thing I need is one that's very energy efficient. Finding the right cooler for my A-liner trailer has been a bit of a challenge. It always be has been because I didn't get a cooler when I bought the A-liner. It came with a styrofoam box, that's it. The first cooler I purchased was a Cooltron P75, which I mounted vertically in my cabinet. This was a thermoelectric type cooler and I chose it based solely on price and availability. In travel, I would bungee it in place to stop the lid from opening and kept a beach ball inside to help prevent the contents from shifting. But that didn't always work. Some roads are rougher than others, and after one particularly bad road, I opened the cooler to find that my salsa jar had popped open and spilled the contents all over the place. But that was the least of my concerns. The biggest problem was its power consumption. It used 3.8 amps continuously, whether it needed it or not. As for actually keeping the contents cold, that entirely depended on room temperature. On hot summer days, it could not achieve adequate cooling to keep things fresh. And due to high power consumption, I had to power it off at night, and if it wasn't cool enough to start with, I had another problem. Oh, 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 oh. I don't know what it is. Oh, whew. that's nasty. I gotta clean this out, and that's with bleach. Sorry, no organics here. This has to be totally disinfected. Not only that, I found out that when there's condensation in there, it seems to run on, run into the floor and into the carpet. So the carpet's starting to stink as well. Although it seemed like a deal only paying $100 for a cooler, in reality it was not because of the food wastage and uh, I couldn't keep leftovers and uh, it didn't always keep things cold. Um, it wasn't worth it at all. I really don't think this type of cooler is appropriate for a trailer that goes on back roads. Upright, uh, flops around. Actually, one of the screws has even come loose here. So I don't think this is a good idea. I'm learning that way that maybe I shouldn't be using a vertical cooler. And also, this cooler sucks. It sucks all the energy out of my solar power. It doesn't have a thermostat. So I think the weak link in my trailer right now is this cooler and I have to do something about it. So I'd been asking around as I've been camping and when I was in Whitewater Dry, I met a, a nice lady named Nancy who uh, she camped in her van and she had a winter, it was called a winter FM 60G I believe. It wasn't cheap. She said she paid somewhere around seven, seven hundred and fifty dollars for it US. So way out of my price range, but the thing is it was an actual refrigerator in a box. So it kept everything cool, it kept it frozen if she wanted it frozen. And not only that, she ran it off a hundred watt suitcase type solar panel and a battery. That was it. You may remember my video with Georgia Mann and her tag trailer. She used a Norcold NRF30 compressor type refrigerator that had 30 liters capacity. It could cool and freeze at the same time and ran exclusively on a battery charged with 100 watt solar panels. Georgia was not only a fine artist, but she was also an excellent cook, so food storage was essential to her. So since I have 200 watts, it should be a, a no-brainer for me, but with the cooler I have, it has not worked. Looking around on Amazon, I found a Alpacool C20. Um, the 20 may be 20 liters, I'm not sure, but it is really small. And small is okay for me, because it's just myself, and every few days I usually have a chance to get more groceries anyway. So, I went on Amazon, it was $239, including delivery. 
in Canada, the same one, believe it or not, is $671.99, not including delivery. So it sounds like one heck of a deal. I'm going to give it a go. I've ordered it. I'm going to pick it up in Globe tomorrow, and we'll see how it works with my A-liner. Alright, Amazon order. Uh, a little bigger than expected. Don't want to wreck my hat. My new cooler. Well, here's the box directly from UPS. Let's see what's inside. This side up, got that part right. Now when you're uh, camping like I am, UPS is one of the few options you have. Because they're usually conveniently located. Although what, their hours kind of suck. Alpacool. We make you feel cool. I like to feel cool. As cool as possible. Well, it's pretty compact. That's not a bad thing. There's the space. And uh, reading online, uh, you can actually tilt it up to 45 degrees. And they say it's great for uh, you know, putting in a off-road vehicle or a Jeep or something. So that's perfect for me. Uh, 12 volt and 110. User's manual. Looks like it goes with the 110 line. So looks complete. Let's try it out. So this is the inside of my camper. And as you can see, I don't have a lot of space. Things have to be cramped in here and they have to be compact and portable so that I can move around. And that's where this new refrigerator really works well because it's very small. This is my old cooler here, which is, uh, is what I'm gonna get rid of. I'm not gonna get rid of it now, but in comparison, there is certainly less room to store things. But I'm thinking in this way of doing it, I can actually put it more, more in and, and make best use of space. In beer terms, that's 24 cans of beer with three bottles of water to keep hydrated. Speaking about use of space, what I really like about this is that I can just take it and slide it under the bed, which is perfect for me. So I don't, I don't even have to remove the old cooler right now. I can just use it under the bed. In my trailer, the 13 inches under the bed is perfect. Got the cord plugged in. It's plugged into a 12 volt outlet on the side. Uh, power it up. Now, if you can hear that, super, super quiet. I mean, I won't notice that at all. And it is using one point two five amps not a lot of power drainage either either so that's good 18 degrees celsius is the current temperature i'm going to set the fridge to two degrees celsius a good temperature for most groceries and eco mode is the energy saving mode if you don't need a fast cool down time to fill her up Try to leave enough space between items to let the air circulate. Anything that may leak should be in watertight freezer bags, and vegetables should be in the crisper type bags. To measure current, I use my trailer ammeter. Turning the fridge on uses 0.002 amps, but when the compressor kicks in, it usually peaks at 1.6 amps before dropping. 
Well, after a few weeks on the road, I think I've got a better idea of how this refrigerator performs. First of all, I've gone through several climates, all off the grid, only relying on my solar panels and battery. Secondly, I've gone from hot, arid desert to super cold, rocky mountains in that period. And I've traveled over 2,500 miles on really rough, rocky roads, so it's been bouncing around quite a bit. Those should give me a good idea of its performance. To make sure I knew how well it performed when I needed it, I collected the data when it was a hotter day than normal. The results were surprising. At 90 degrees, it only took 8 minutes to cool down to 2 degrees Celsius. Once it reached the cooling temp, it would shut off for 20 minutes and start up again for 3. Power consumption was very low, using a peak of 1.87 amps, but typically only 1.3. Using the extreme as an example, it used 0.24 amps for every hour of operation. If left on all day, the maximum it used was 5.8 amps of current draw. There's one other feature of this refrigerator that I haven't had a chance to try out yet, and that's how well does it freeze. And the reason being, as soon as I bought it, I packed it up with stuff to keep it cool. So I was using it for dairy products, beer of course, uh, fruit and vegetables, but I never actually froze something. So I took a little bit of a break, I've cleaned it out, it's been off for a while, so it's going to start fresh. And what I'm going to do is I've got four bottles of water and a tub of frozen maple walnut ice cream. Almost sounds healthy. And we're going to pack that up and see how well it does. 22 Celsius is the ambient temperature. Instead of eco mode, I switched to quick cooling mode. And minus 20 Celsius is the coldest setting. Okay, I think we've given it a good test. I've had it on for just over five hours. Um, as far as power consumption goes, big difference when it's on freezing mode. In freezing mode, the compressor was on most of the time. It cycled a full 15 minutes, but only shut down three minutes after each cycle. At 1.87 peak amps, it used 1.56 amps per hour. That's 38 amps for the entire day. But let's see how well it froze things. Okay, this bottle of water is partially froze. I can, yeah, there is some, it's kind of like a slushy right now. It's not completely froze, but it's definitely got ice in there ice cream. Let me just grab a spoon here and do we have mush or do we have ice cream? I guess I've got to open it up to find that out. Okay, let's see if I can open it now. Okay, well it's not completely mush but It's a little soft. Oh, can't talk and eat ice cream at the same time. It's a little soft, but it's not bad. It's really, it's perfect for an ice cream cone. So my assessment of the Alpa Cool as a freezer is a little cooler tone. At normal ambient temperature, it did not keep hard ice cream hard. It requires at least five to six hours to turn bottled water into ice, and it had far more power consumption than when cooling. It's probably true that if you had everything frozen before you put it in this fridge, it would stay frozen, but this is not always an option for a traveler. The reality is, I have no intention of using it for a freezer. I'm a camper. I mean, ice cream's a luxury, and uh, and I can go to a gas station and get some Ben and Jerry's or whatever, so I'm not really worried about that. It can freeze, but for my, at least for my application, I'm going to use it as a cooler. I'm going to keep it on 2 degrees uh, Celsius, 
34, 35 Fahrenheit, and it's great for everything I, I use it for. In a side-by-side -side comparison, the Coolatron used far too much power to be practical off the grid, while the Alpacool was extremely efficient. As for cooling, the Coolatron not only took a long time to reach its coolest temperature, but it could not keep its cool when the room was hot. The Alpacool, however, had no problem reaching and maintaining its set temperature. To be fair, the Coolatron did score points by having more storage space, was cheaper, and could tilt upright. But the Alpacool was not only a cooler, but a freezer. And it was specifically designed for long-term travel and camping. Well, I hope you found my video useful, and if the data seems a little extraordinary, please feel free to investigate on your own. But I based it not on stuff that I found online, I based it on actual field tests with my own equipment. So here's my results. The Alpacool C20 is 15 times more energy efficient for cooling than this older Coolatron. Why? Well, I don't think the, the thermal electric technology has really kept up with the new compressors. Also, I think this Alpacool is much better insulated. And third, it's only a cooling a smaller space, 20 liters. And with refrigerators and coolers, size does matter. It's my honest opinion. I would definitely recommend this refrigerator. It's a great price. It's nice and compact. And for me, it works well. So thumbs up. Please check the video description for more info on the Alpacool and the other three brands mentioned in this review. Now I gotta get rid of this ice cream. Ice cream! Get your ice cream here!